hey what's up guys in this video we are going to go through three scopes that will help us to color correct and color grade our videos accurately so it is just really more of knowing what they do and how to read them most videographers don't even use the scopes because they think they are so complicated and difficult to read and use. In this video, I'm going to show you just how simple they are and how they can really help you to color correct and color grade your videos accurately. When I started color grading, I had no idea of how to read and use the scopes. So I was just looking at the screen just like some of you do. But the problem was after the video was done, it was looking good on my screen, but was not looking the same on other people's screens. Sometimes it was too dark or sometimes it was too bright or off colors, you know, things like that. So learning how to use and read the scopes became very important because scopes will help you to look at colors and exposure of your images more accurately, bearing in mind that most of us don't even have grading monitors. We just have these cheap monitors, you know. Now let's go through these scopes and let me show you what they do and how to read them in the most simplest way. There are five scopes that you will see if it is your first time opening Lumetri scopes. But we're just gonna concentrate on three, the waveform, parade RGB, and the vector scope YUV. These other tools are just a waste of time and a waste of space. So let's just remove them. To remove the scope, just right click and uncheck it from here. So let's remove the vector scope HLS and let us also remove the histogram. Let me also uncheck the other two so that we can have a closer look at one at a time. We're gonna start with the waveform. The waveform helps us correct our image for exposure. By default, the waveform type will be on RGB. So let's change it to Luma by right clicking, then go to waveform type and change it to Luma so that we can just have this white waveform. Using the waveform, you can see how dark or light your image is from right to left. You can actually see specific points across your image which are overexposed or underexposed. Vertically, it shows you how bright or dark your image is in the units of IRE. IRE basically stands for Institute of Radio Engineers. It is a measurement of light intensity or brightness. It has a scale of 0 to 100 and at 0 IRE, the image is dark, it's black. And at 100 IRE, your image is white. This graph that you are seeing here, it shows you the exposure levels of your image. For you to have a good and evenly exposed image, you want this graph to stay within the 0 and 100 range. If your image is too dark or underexposed, you will see the graph moves to the bottom. And if it is too bright, the graph will move to the top. Now, this is very important. Every image has five luminance levels. It has the blacks, which is 0 to 20 IRE, shadows, which is 20 to 40 IRE, midtones, which is 40 to 60 IRE, highlights, which is 60 to 80 IRE, and whites, which is within 80 to 100 IRE. The good part is you can adjust all these levels separately without affecting the others. For example, I can grab the blacks here, and you see when I move the slider, only the blacks are being affected in the image. And if I grab the whites, only whites will be affected. And it is very easy to read and use. Let me show you. If I move this playhead, you will notice that where the image is dark, on the waveform, the graph is down. Look at the left side of this clip. It is dark. If I move it further, where this signpost is exposed, you can see on the waveform, the graph goes up. Within 40 and 60 IRE, that is the range of the skin tone exposure. And it's very important that you expose your skin tones properly. What I normally do is I draw a mask around the skin tones and check how it is exposed on the waveform. As you can see, it is within 40 and 60 IRE. Then I delete the mask and work on the blacks, shadows, highlights, and whites of my image. For good exposure, always make sure that your whites are just below 100 IRE and your blacks are just above 0 IRE. That way you are sure that you have an evenly exposed image. 
Now let's look at Parade RGB. When we switch to the RGB Parade, you will notice that it's almost like the waveform but separated on different channels, red, green, and blue. If your RGB parade is not looking like this, just right click on it and change the type here. The RGB parade helps us fix color balance issues and it is very easy to read. If one channel is higher than others, it means the image is not color balanced. For a perfect color balance of your image, all these three channels have to be on the same level. And you can get them to match by adjusting temperature and tint sliders or by going to the curves and adjusting the RGB channels to get them to be on the same level. Most of the time when I don't have any white reference in my image, I just use the RGB parade to get a perfect white balance. Next, let's look at the Vectorscope YUV. The Vectorscope YUV is the easiest to read. It shows what colors are in your image and their saturation. If I turn this image into black and white by using the saturation slider, you will notice that on the vector scope, there is only one white dot on the center, meaning there is no color in the image. But as I begin to add color to the image using this saturation slider, you can see that dot beginning to expand in different directions of the colors which are in our image. I use the vector scope a lot for three main reasons. The first one is when I'm doing white balance. If something is pure white, it should show as a dot on the center of the vector scope YUV. So if my image has something in it that is white, what I do is to draw a mask around that area alone and check on the vector scope to see if it is a pure white. For example, in this image, there is a switch here. This is supposed to be pure white. So let me create a mask around that switch like this. And when you check the vector scope, you see that it has some shade of blue. That's why it is moving towards the blue. So to correct it, I just move the temperature slider while looking at the vector scope itself until maybe somewhere here. Then move the tint slider to somewhere around here. Now you can see it's in the middle of the vector scope, meaning it is pure white and that is the white balance for this image. Then I go to the effects controls and remove the mask. The second reason that I use my vector scope is to check for the skin color. Perfect skin colors usually lie between yellow and red on this line of the vector scope. So what I normally do is to mask areas of the skin color like this. You can see that it is almost there but a little bit towards red. And the way I correct this is to use curves. Then use hue versus hue to check out some of that red. So all I'll do is to take this eyedropper and select on the skin, then move this node a little bit while it's looking at the vector scope until it is perfectly aligned on this line over here. Then remove the mask and now you can see our skin color looks way better and natural. The third reason I use the vector scope is to make sure my colors are not oversaturated or too saturated. If you look at the vector scope, there is this line connecting all these colors. The legal requirement is that your colors must not exceed this line. If you look at our image using the vector scope YUV, it has colors exceeding that line towards the red and yellow. So I have to adjust those specific colors to make sure they are within the line. So let me add another instance of Lumetri color. Go to the curves, hue versus saturation curves. Since we are trying to reduce the saturation and the color that looks to be very bright is this indicator right here. So I will pick this eyedropper and select that indicator. Click on it and reduce the saturation like this. And look at the level of saturation coming back to normal. 
all right guys these are the three lumetri scopes that i use for color correction and color grading you will understand more about them when we go to color correction and color grading just soon now before i show you a step by step of how to color correct and color grading which is the reason why you are here let me show you how lumetri color works in the next video step by step showing you all the buttons on lumetri color so that when we start grading you don't have issues to say hey where did he pick that too or what does it do you know let me just take this time and show you all the buttons in lumetri color and what they do this is it for now i'll catch you in the next video lumetri color peace